All right, everybody. Thank you so much for being patient with me here. Um, I really appreciate that. You know, it's always, here I am. It's always when we have a special guest or something exciting happening uh, that we get a little bit of a um, internet glitch. But I think our internet uh, is stable and solid. Let me uncover my brooch here so I look all fancy pants. There we go. I think we're good. So it's great to have all of you all here, you know. I my I, I'm the bead shop IT person and I'm not afraid to do it. So we are all set. I'm going to take a bracing cup of coffee, drink of coffee, and let's see if I can hear uh, Cynthia. Cynthia, are you there? I am, Kate. <laughs> all right, let's get you on the it's screen. Awesome. All right, here we are. Look, we did it. I can't believe it. Yay, we did it. It's looking good. We did it. I'm. I put I a little. That mug. Right. It's my little. It's my little uh, espresso mug. Right. Does uh, that fit to right. another well, thing? What's that? <laughs> Does it fit to another little carafe? Right. My little, hot my coffee. Little, right. Um, well, thank you. A, so much for being here. I want to take up a couple of housekeeping things. I want to uncover my brooch because my mom bought this um, for me. And I know that you and both you and Azalea love flowers. So I got these. I wore my big flower brooch today. Um, and I wanted to say a big hello. Janice is here. Drea is here. Gita is uh, here from across the miles. I wanted to give Drea a big shout out if uh, and uh, for putting up all of the pages. You can go and see these projects, so I'll talk about those in a second. But I also wanted to give Gita a big shout out because um, I don't know if you follow soccer, Cynthia, but you know, my Chris follows soccer. He's a soccer fan. Right now the Euro Cup is going on and uh, there's a big Denmark game that starts very soon. So Gita, I know, is wild with excitement. So we're rooting for you, Gita, even though I think they're playing England, which Chris might be, I, I don't know. But good luck to everyone in the Euros. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, so festive. That's right. Um, so, hey, we've got some of your new pieces here at the shop. Or at least yeah, new I'm items. excited to see what people think. Yeah. So we did some, yeah. um, we did some really fun, I think we made some pretty fun choices. Now you can find, let me go over here uh, and put these, put these banners up here. Um, and... Of course, you can find, I'll get this business out of the way. You can find us, of course, at beadshop.com, um, at the bead table, and of course, on our YouTube channel um, at beadshop.com. You can follow us there. And I wanted to put this up too, Cynthia. This is your um, Enchanted Adornments Etsy shop. Your Etsy shop, um, and I'll put these back up at the end of the broadcast as well, you put a lot of kind of fun and exciting things that you don't really sell anywhere else on your Etsy shop as well. So if you go to Etsy, you can search Cynthia Thornton um, Enchanted Adornments and you'll find all that stuff there. So um, I wanted to put that up as well. Yes. So before we get into some of the new stuff that we've got from you, and we've got so many people, there's so many comments that are like, it's great to see you. Emily is here. She says, good morning. To oh, us. Hi, Emily. Um, we've got uh, people are saying about how much Sherry's saying all of your pieces are fabulous. So I'm going to put your uh, camera into this stream, your demo camera here. And we cooked up a little, some, some fun things for today. But um, I sent you a whole bunch of beads that you're gonna be playing around with, 
right? Um, <clears throat> which are, I think, look, look at that pile. So while you kind of sweep through that pile. I know, so tidy. <laughs> right? It's, <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, Do you guys love how organized I am? That's how I make stuff. There's a big pile. It's so terrible. I know. I you I I look at your your um when you're doing demos, Kate, and you have all those little nice dishes. Right. I like I like our dishes. Dish. I'm gonna exit that so, we'll soon. Do this. so bear with me right here just a second. I'm gonna do I'll this. Organize. I'm gonna put you on, I'm gonna organize, I'm gonna do this configuration. There we go. Look at me work this camera. Okay, there we go. I like that part. So while I'm gonna grab a couple of things. I'm actually going to configure you right here in the center. Then let me do that. There you go. You're in the middle. There you go. You're in. The, you're on the big screen now. There we are. Um, As I was talking, there, I couldn't understand it. <laughs> right. So, um, talk like to people. You've been having. A... What's that? Okay, I didn't hear you. You. Oh, were can you hear me? For a second. What was that? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Okay. But I, didn't hear, I can now. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's perfect. So um, I'm going to try. You're actually a little quiet is what I really appreciate everybody being so. Um, let me see. Uh, I'm going to do this and try this. All right. That might be a little bit better for microphone volume. Um, so talk to everybody um, a little bit about um, a little bit about you, a little bit about your history, a little bit about Green Girl Studios. I'm going to grab a couple of things um, and I'll be right back. So I'm going to talk to the talk All to right. the people, and then well, we're going to get the comments from this. So if people have questions, um, Azalea will have to read them to me if there are any. Right questions but um i'm cynthia from green girl studios um we've been around for maybe i don't know 10 years kate maybe actually it's probably more like 22 years of making beads and pendants um i started off making mermaids the, fir the first reason is i went into a bead shop in columbus ohio when i was in college and um I had this idea for a pendant, a necklace I wanted. And I looked at their mermaid selection and they were really like um, kind of masculine. Not that yeah, there's not anything wrong with a masculine mermaid, but <laughs> they had a sort of man, like man face, you know, like, all, like they'd have these really rocking bodies, you know? And then you get to the face, and it would just be like too, like, like you know, it was just didn't. I was like, "Is this, is this all the ones you got? You guys have?" And they're like, "Yes." And then they showed me. This is funny because I hadn't met Bob Burkett at this point. I was like, I was like eighteen, and they showed me this tray of like, now. These are special beads. They they come from this guy in New Mexico. Um, he don't. We only see him at this one flea market in Santa Fe. So if you want it, you've got to get this. And I bought a teeny little armadillo bead, and it was my first Bob Burkett bead. It was, I didn't know who he was, but it was the only one of the kind of quality that I was looking for, like the type of, you know, lots of detail. It wasn't like that kind of smushy detail, but really sharp, really right, intricate. Right. And, and I remember just looking at that and being like, I want to make these. Somehow I'm going to make these beads. And um, at the time, I was in art school, and I was a sculpting sculptor major, is a fine art major. Right. And um, I was making these bronzes, and they were all like pretty, you know. And when I say large, I'm talking like this. They right. Were, they were large for me, but they were not large for anybody else. <laughs> but it was still one of those things, you know. I loved making sculpture, and um, it just turned out when I left school. Um, I went to have them made and then realized that no one knew how to make them. Right. And no one knew how to cast them. They were like so confused. 
Right. Well, beads back in, you know, 20 years ago, if you asked someone to make a bead for you, I, I should get out, look around. I've been rearranging my studio and I found this box of my first um, masters. So when you send a piece off to have it made, you send off what's your master, the first one. And usually you have, you'll cast it and you want that piece to be metal. But at the time, I didn't know that. And I was right. making them in um, clay. And I remember so you I would, got back you would the most terrible them. passes you have ever seen. <laughs> hmm? like these, I, want, somebody put the screw. I don't know if you guys know how you cast anything, but here's so here's one. This is an example. All right, these are no, I just this is on my desk. So where's the camera? All right, so you see this this little nub right here? This is where the metal goes into and fills to make a mold. That's your screw. So that's a little, this little cat hair. It's Marty. He gets on my desk. Um, but uh, so anyway, if you, uh, I sent them pieces and they put the sprue, this, like right on the top of the head, like right there, like right where I <laughs> have the detail, right in the face. And, the, and I was like, you couldn't have put that on his butt? I mean, you had to put that right in the face? I mean, how are you supposed to right. get that off? It looked terrible. And then they said to me, they go, they're from, they're like from, I don't know what, New Rhode Island. They're like, oh, all you have to do is just, you just grind that off. They're grind like, it down. Like, like, right. spot to grind that off. I mean, right. I mean, really. Re sculpt that thing. Right. Right. And, and once you use your master. How many people would send, they'd send back. And I had, and. Oh, I was going to say. Once you can't, if you, they make you a master, this is with any yeah. casting house. You don't get your money back. If they do a terrible mm -hmm. job, if you've got somebody that's a sucky that's mold it. maker. Yeah, you that's it. Drop several hundred dollars on a sucky mold. Yeah. And you don't get your master so, back. I mean, your your wax curve. your wax is done too, right? Your Oh, they sent them back, but they weren't worth a flip. Yeah, no. No. Well, oh yeah, whatever you sent, that's gone. That's, yeah, that's, that's gone. You, know, that's, you have to start from scratch. Unless Greg makes it, and Greg has figured out how to make the molds without. See, so clever. How to make them? So we had clever. to learn all of that stuff. Yeah. So, so you know, have been making beads. All of our stuff in house. So you have been making beads for thirty years, almost. Do you think? Um, mm, uh, I've been making them for a long time, but I wouldn't, uh, it's hard to say. How old am I now? I'm 47? I don't know. So. I mean, we've known each other a while. Uh, probably. I think, I, I think um, we're in two decades. I don't know. It's so. been, we're in the two decades realm. We are. We are. Time. But I remember so. when we first met, I don't know if you remember, but Jess came up and she was like, my friend, she's doing this show, and it was at, like, I don't remember, somewhere on the West Coast, and my stuff didn't arrive. Might have been Oakland, I want to say, but Jess got me into this show. And I want to say Trary was involved somehow. <laughs> it might have been the, that babe. Yes. The area of bead so extravaganza. Like, Here's yes. my stuff. Yes. And you came up and you're like, I'm Kate. And you're looking around and we're like, we're trying to scramble around. And you're like, hold on a minute. And you came back with your like leftover from somewhere in your, like in your car <laughs> or wherever you had all this like cloth and props. And I'm like, where'd this come from? You came rolling it in. I was like, oh my God, save the day. Let's and then get was like, can you believe it? See, I told you, miracle worker. And that Let's was 20 years ago. Move. Remember that? It was so fun. And then that was a great show. And then that was then we went out to eat and that was all. And then yeah. we were friends forever. Friends forever. It's true. It's true. Yeah. Well, friends for our, 20 our, years, so. I love this walk down memory lane, but I know people are like, this walk down memory lane is amazing, you guys, but let's see some bead content. Uh, <laughs> or not, whatever. We'll just keep walking right, down memory lane. Let's see some bead content. So I want to first throw down, I'm going to put my demo cam in and I want to show, um, these are some of the new things that we've gotten from you. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to get a little bit closer. Oh, good. I've been, I was 
practicing that uh, stuff there. Right. We're going to talk a little bit about what I sent you as well, because we're going to talk a little bit about design and I, I want you to talk about what I've sent you and how you're going to, um, how we're going to use it. But these are the pieces. So Janice and I, what we did was we were like, oh my gosh, we haven't got any new green girl stuff in, in a while. And we were both like, we both went to the website, we made some choices and then we kind of put some like, I don't know, everything in a hat. And then we chose, I don't know. It, it was, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, how are we going to choose? Cause there's so many, but what we really were totally, well, we're totally stoked on everything, but these links really caught our eye. I love, love, love these. And, um, I do love a link. I love a link. And this was one, this heart one here, the some pursue happiness, others create it. I can't believe we haven't carried this one. This one is charming, literally. The one, the puppy one, puppy love, this little. Is this your dog? Is this your Sheba? That's my Sheba. Yeah, that's what my I thought. My dog, Suni. She's yeah, I thought so. Look how cute She's that got is. that little cinnamon bun tail. Yeah, that little tail. I can tell. I'm working right. my way through making so many breeds of dogs. Right. So many. And so many mixtures. This oh, mandrake. That's a nice mandrake lady. This, and look at the back. When you, so when you carve these kind of totems on the back, is there any, is this just a whimsical fancy out of your brain or does this have some kind of a significance? Well, that's, um, uh, are you familiar with the idea of sigils? No. Where you make a symbol that you have like an intent. And so people used to make those as like um, talismans or amulets. And oh. what it is, is like kind of like a blessing or a wish for something. And while I'm carving it, and usually what I'll do is I'll just kind of, with things like that, I'll just put an intention in my mind and start carving, like those sigil type things. And for that, I was going to make something. I was thinking about luck and prosperity and just good fortune in general. So the idea is that while I'm making it, I'm focusing really hard on making something that's that has uh, kind of a good energy, I guess. Oh my and, gosh! Um, I, how did I not I know? Use this? Sort of that same kind of vocabulary, visual vo vocabulary, of like kind of like heart shapes, spirals, right. and just make a design that sort of you know, it's decorative, but I'm kind of focusing intent. I love really that it's called a positive. What and what's, what's it called, Cynthia? Again, a sigil. A sigil. Sigil is that the symbol on the back. And people That's have been making them for hundreds of years. I mean, nowadays the, you'll see so it's kind of popular and trendy to make them on I, paper, and then they'll put them in like a wallet or something. It's an old, huh. old tradition, kind of like. Um, I don't know where where the first time I heard about that, but how have we missed that? I can't believe like, that. Uh, like a lucky charm, I guess. Yeah, and um, that's what uh, Drea just put up. It's spelled S I G I L. I had no idea. I, I always learn something. That's and that's something that's totally up my alley. I can't believe I don't know it. That's crazy. Um, I also love. We also got this giant moth that I love. I know you love moth symbolism. Oh, yes. Look at how big that is. She's a big I one. Do. Yeah, that the whole Yeah, that one, you know, I made that one with the intent of being a focal and um and to paint it. I don't know if you've seen lately that I've been like doing a lot of surface treatments to the paint. Yeah. For years I just kept them in the antique cuz that's the most popular. Um, right. But lately, it's been kind of fun to use those vintage paints, the patinas, and right. change yeah. the colors up. And you can layer them with lots of different colors.
colors. So it's a, yeah. perfect, a perfect piece for customization. A lot of our pieces can be customized. But it that really one, I think, has a lot of, I've made a bunch of those and made simple necklaces. Yeah. And painted them kind of realistic. And then some, like I've uh, buffed off the color because you know you can sand it a little bit with those buffing blocks. Right, with those and buffing then, blocks. Uh, put another yeah. layer of color down and sort of stack them so it's kind of like, uh, yeah, so it's kind of like the, you know, in Venice, how they have the waterways that the paint from generations and generations, you can see it on the edge of the water line. Right, and right. All the stacked up paint. Right. You get a similar effect on the pewter pieces by just layering it, letting it dry, and then right. sanding off the top Sanding of a little bit, right, and then put so. put a different layer on. Now this, these are all uh, cast in a high grade pewter, correct? So this, when the Fine piece pewter. comes out, it comes out and then you guys tumble them, right? to give them kind of this shine kind of feel. Oh, and I think Cynthia, I think you are frozen on your end. Sorry about that, everybody. I bet we'll get her to come back. Cynthia, I don't know if you can hear me, but you might want to remove your forward facing camera. Though, so let me see if I can unmute. Cynthia, can you hear me here? I'm gonna remove her from the stream and I am going to have her uh, rejoin. So she'll rejoin. So I'll talk about these until uh, I get her to, uh, to rejoin uh, the stream. So I'm keeping an eye on it. So sorry, you guys. Sometimes our technology is our super friend, and sometime techno sometimes technology can be a, a just a pain in the bootay. So, um, but this, what I was going to say with this is the pewter, the the pewter that's here. When uh, after these are cast, when they come out of the mold. Um, they're um, tumbled and tumbled. So this is the natural patina of the pewter. And I think, Millie, you were asking a while back here. Let me go back here and see if I can see that, um, that question. Um, can you make them look more antiqued or aged with a patina? The vintage patinas would be a good way to do that, to add that patina in. Um, and add it on and then buff. You can also get a patina, um, and you might want to look online for this. We don't carry it here at Beach Shop, but there are patinas that are pewter specific. Um, and so you can dip, uh, dip them in and, um, and uh, patina them that way. Um, but these will have a natural, um, what I want to say, they will have a natural age as they kind of, you know, age on your jewelry. You can use like a little pro polish pad or a polishing pad to kind of polish these, to polish these back up, which is kind of cool. Let me see if I can add, because Cynthia's other stream is still here. Um, yeah, that, I'm going to remove that one. Let's see if she can get her forward facing, her forward facing uh, camera back in. We'll get her back. I'm going to keep watching uh, for that. So, um, yeah, I think she's restarting it. So we'll just wait patiently for her. Oh, let me uh, let me get this here. So we also have this hand, the hand with the heart, this one. And I love Cynthia's hand pieces here. I love them a lot. I think that they, um, they're they super realistic. Um, they also have kind of a Victorian vibe. I love that kind of Victorian kind of feel um, to these pieces. So, and this one's kind of hefty. These are also great for the bottoms of um, like, uh, what do I want to say? Um, 
lariat pieces. This would be great with a lariat. This would also be great if you're doing kind of like an updated, you remember the wine necklaces way back in, in, the, in the day where you had the wine necklace that came down like this and then it kind of went across the sides like so. So those would all, that would be a great one to do. And of course we had to add a button, this seahorse button. And I like that this seahorse is so, um, is such a, a fat one. Cynthia, I can, I'm gonna add you to the stream. I see her, I see you. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Yay. Yeah, so I don't know what the story is. It's just the internet, I guess. It's always the yeah. way I felt like good it is. until I need it. <laughs> That's right. Well, I'm going to, let me see. I'm going to put us back here and do this. And there we are. So I knew you'd come back. We just have to, you know, we're just keep, we roll with the punches. Doing live shows are not for the faint of heart, right? So uh, no. <laughs> we're not afraid. We're not afraid. Because I was just talking about a little, a little anxiety. That's right. That's right. Um, let me ask you, though, real quick with this one, back to this moth. Um, this piece with the pewter, you can see the thickness of that pewter. And that's, I don't know, maybe about a, maybe a little more than a millimeter or so in thickness. Do you ever punch holes in your own pieces? Yeah, After. you know what? I use, um, uh, I have the oldest pair of um, Euro punch tools, and yeah. you can punch the pewter with that. Yeah, you know, easily, you can easily, right? Punch it. Easily. And this, yeah, I you think. Can punch bronze. I mean, it's a little, I mean, you have to keep, a, you, you know, you keep your hands steady, but it's pretty soft mm -hmm. as far as metals go. Yeah, and punching the, so you could. You added these two here, but if you had a metal hole punch, you could punch a couple more holes there, a couple of there, and some mm -hmm. in the bottom to really, this would be really luscious <clears throat> as a focal that had a lot of um, bits and pieces coming down, coming down from it. So yeah. I talked a little bit about some of these new ones that we have here, and I know you're going to connect your camera eventually, so I'll keep an eye out. But I wanted to talk a little bit about um, creating um, pieces with your pieces, um, and then we'll show. I'll show what I also sent to you, and we'll talk a little bit about design and tackling a design. Um, so. First and foremost, what we've got here, and I'm going to highlight this while you get your uh, your stuff back in. This was that azalea link, right, right here. And I, you know, bead shop, Janice really, I feel like put, besides Chan Lu, because we all know Chan Lu, you know, and her wrap bracelets, but bead shop, we've done a lot, I think, to forward kind of the, the, the wrap bracelet kind of, um, uh, design, I guess, is what I want to say. And I think that these links are perfect for wraps. And you and I talked a little bit about making some wrap bracelets with your pieces. So this um, lotus, no, this is the azalea. That's the one that I chose. And your daughter is also named azalea. And azalea, what she's doing right now is she's doing a lot of embroidery. Right. So I um, and she's doing a lot of embroidery with flowers and cool things. So I what came to my mind with Azalea was the color blue. I don't know why. So I um, Googled blue Azalea. And this is what I came up with. And I'll show you this photo came up. Blue Azalea. And so I took that photo and palleted these beads around that photo. So this is kind of my little tribute to Azalea and her blue flowers and her embroidery and her stuff like that. So, um, so I pulled this palette. And so what I did to start was I used that flat macrame knot and I'm gonna show you guys how I started this too. Um, let me talk, I'm going to talk a little bit through the mechanics of this, Sin, and then we're going to go to your pile of beads that I sent you, if that's okay with you. 
Sure. Yeah, you're good. Okay, perfect. So, um, it looks good. I like it. Let me see. Um, and you can find, let me say, a lot of pieces, people are jumping in and they're super stoked to like see all of these. I'm going to say, of course, you can find everything right here with us at beanshop.com, right there. So, uh, so what I did, and we have a lot of tutorials on the wrap. So what I did, and you guys have seen me do this before. There's a lot of like, there's a ton of tutorials and stuff online that you guys can look at. But I wanted to show you guys how to connect this um, in case, you know, you had some questions about connecting. And I know, Cynthia, we talked about that a little bit yesterday, too. So what I did was I took this azalea piece, right? And what I did was I just got a piece of string, pulled it through, and lashed it down to my board, my design board right here, and put that Clip that on with our clampers. Thank you, Emily Miller, for bringing those to Bead Shop. And then, if you can see, I'm going to get the camera kind of close so you guys can see here. I sent you and your grouping, Cynthia, I sent you some KO thread. And so that's what I used here, this KO, this skinny thread. And then I also sent Cynthia, and we'll look at it, I sent her some 0.5 millimeter Chinese knotting cord. So... I use this 0.5 millimeter leather. This is the um, the rose gold leather. I put it through the azalea link. And what I noticed was that the leather, I'll show you on this side, that when you put the leather through, the leather wants to sit one strand on top of the other here like this when you put it in, right? So what I did was I got my clamper and I kind of clamped it down to the side here so that my leather was laying side by side. So when I came in and did the flat macrame, the leather laid flat. So I thought that was kind of a, a good tip. For you guys so let me get this back this little thread back in here let me get this back onto the board and then what i did there we go was i got that ko thread i laid that ko thread down can you see that 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 KO thread that's there, I laid it down on top of my leather and just macrame it over the top. And what I did was I used a little bit of GS Hypo, put it down so that the thread didn't move, and then I glued it there at the bottom. And so it's been sitting, so I'm gonna go ahead and thread burn that off. Okay, so I'm gonna get my thread burner. Oh, that's nice cool. Yeah, I, I need to, and you need to be very careful not to nick your leather, which I just did right there. So, you know, okay, so let me, let me get myself out of this. So what if you do that, like I did, being kind of working kind of fast? I haven't dropped my tails off of this yet, right? So what I could do is, see that little burn? It happens. <clears throat> I should have probably clipped it, but I had the thread burner in my hand. So what I could do is I just flip this around. You get the camera down. And I have a couple people have a couple more questions for you, but I'm just going to get myself out of this pickle real quick. And see how since I still have the tails, what I can do is, and you can jump right in to beadshop.com and get our tutorial on doing this flat macrame knot. Essentially, though, you guys, it's two half hitches that just combine to create the one flat macrame. So see how I am putting this back up, just macrameing over the macrame. 
And I actually think that I like the size of this better. So it's a happy accident. And it shows, it always shows that if something happens with your pieces, you can always kind of creatively think to get out of it. If your internet goes down, you just reconnect. If you burn your leather, you just save it, right? So there it is. So the macrame, so this is a good question. So Drea asked me, could I push this macrame up a little bit? But it's, I can't, it's glued already. So I'll come in, I'll glue this down. I'm going to add a little drop of glue there, a little drop of glue there, a little drop of glue there. And I'm going to get one more, I'm going to do one more knot. And having that little bit of air, having that little bit of space, um, really allowed me to do this. You could also, I don't know, I could have wire wrapped it. I could have, there's all kinds of things that you could have done here. I but the one thing, would have done a dab of paint. Yeah, <laughs> you could be, exactly. You could have painted the top of this leather, for sure, because you always have I paint around. I thought of that. Well, yeah, I do. But that's a that's a far and away easier solution than getting out, hunting for the paint, mixing the paint, and then for that little dab. Yeah. So there we go. So that's that's where it is, right there. There we are. So I'm gonna put in your demo camera here real quick. Let me get my demo camera out so we're all here. I'm gonna put your demo camera in. And I'm going to work on my macrame a little bit here. So talk to me, Sin, a, a little bit about like your, first of all, there was a question here from, I think it was um, from Christine. She wanted to know if you still do your initial designs in wax or do you still do clay? Can you bring that little wax guy back in? That's on the screen now, now that we've got that overhead camera. So. So oh, this is um, a wax. This is a copy of a wax. This isn't the master. Like a, I now carve pretty much exclusively in wax because um, I've kind of gotten the hang of it, you know. And it's kind of like when you learn how to weld first, then it's really hard to go back to, to learning how to solder, um, which is why right. I can't solder yeah. for crap because I learned how to fill with a welder. So now. I've got to retrain my brain. <laughs> That's um, right. If you're interested in, yeah, wax work is one of those things that takes a lot of, it's kind of like ceramics where you need to let your brain rest and just sort of like not think too hard and just sort of um, kind of, I, I guess the word is, is to just sort of use it like kind of like a meditation because if you try too hard, your hands will stiffen up and then you'll make a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. I, I was just working on this. I bought these opals several years ago, and um, I'm about to make a, a cast, what's called a cast bezel. So oh. this is the first step of that. So you put, like, the stone has been coated around the edge with the wax, and here's another one. Oh, yeah, I see that. Thing. Yeah. It doesn't have anything on the back. So what's going to happen is after I complete the outer edge and carve it, I'll pop out the opal and then um, mold it and then cast it. And then you can put the opal, you put it from behind and either use like a little prong setting or a bezel. Like you can flatten it down if you make, I'll have to make this look a tiny bit lar larger to hold that. But that's one of the things. It's one of the reasons it's good because you can make bezels, which you can't really do with clay. I mean, you can right. make polymer, but then it's an, always in polymer. It's really fragile. The good thing right. about wax is that it's very, here's another one that was sitting there. It's extremely like flexible. See, so you kind of bend it back and forth. And this right. is the wax part. So when you're working with clay, um, you kind of have to work in stages where you bake it and then um, carve a little bit or right. you just direct or direct, I guess, carve. And then right. 
you can go and do some finishing, but it's really fragile. So wax has this flexibility that other materials don't have. And that's why people still use it for, you know, casting large scale. Right. Bronzes, you'll use, you can use wax. Of course, you can have different recipes of wax to suit your type of um, what you're trying to make. Like you can make different ones. Oh, you know, I was just doing this little cluster. I was looking at this palette and it's so right up my street. It's that kind <laughs> of opaly color. You know, I love right. it. Like these are so pretty. I don't know what they, these are called. So these I'm going to show you. I'm, I'm going to. I'll add, I've got what we did here. Um, let me show you this. Let me get all this stuff out of the way. Um, bear with me here just a second. Um, yeah, these are beautiful beads that you sent, Kate. I can't wait. You, to like, them. you like them? Yeah. I love them. I particularly love just the co the combination. Well, so this is a good like, color. Let me show you. I, I'll, I've got the same ones here. Let me, I'm going to um, solo lay out these so you guys can see these in their own, um, in their, uh, what do I want to say, in their strands. Uh, why isn't this, sorry, yeah, my, my I do like a, bead, like a bead soup. So good. There we go. Is that coming through? Gosh, I don't know what it is with our internet today. I'm going to try and remove that. Bear with me here. Just a second. Come on yeah, now. These Opaly ones are super good, too. I didn't... I was immediately drawn to that. Right. Let me remove that. Let me... Uh, let me go to your... So you can... Yeah, come on now. There we go. There's your, all right. So tell me what, so what we've got, and you can go right to the list um, on um, on the website, on the beadshop.com website. But those ones that you were showing, Cynthia, those little ivory ones, those are what we call English cut. And they have a very, um, what do I want to say, vintage kind of feel um to them i like them a lot they remind me of like rose cut diamonds you know how they right. have those big facets on a rose cut like i do things. i don't know i love it and you know how i feel have, um, on it like a coating it's like a like a metallic iridescence on there i don't know if you can yeah, see yeah. it from my lighting but, that mercury um, that mercury this, finish i think yeah, I don't know what it is, but it's kind of like uh, it's a subtle ship, like a golden champagne shimmer. It's really pretty. yeah, they're really pretty. And then it goes well with this whole group, it's kind it's a perfect neutral. And so, when you are thinking about what you might make with these pieces, what um, how, how do you tackle? How do, how do you start? How do you tackle something like this? Um, when I'm designing and I have a limited palette, which I love to use a limited palette because there is no better way to right. increase your creativity than to have, it's kind of like, um, what's that show called Top Chef? Or what's that one where they, you've got to get that, you're given a, a basket of food and then you have to make something. Right, right, right. Top Chef. Uh, or, yeah, I think it's Top Chef. So here is kind of like your basket of ingredients. And really what I like to do is just kind of spread everything out and look at it, mm -hmm. you know, and say, hey, mm -hmm. what could I make with this? What could I do? Right. And um, I just think that this, like, since it, like, these are colors I would normally, I'm already drawn to, um, this is a pretty easy challenge, you know. Right. Um, there were things, though, I haven't made that wrap bracelet, so when I was looking at it, I had this idea of making something that was kind of an eye shape, and I thought, hey, that wrap bracelet would be pretty cool, because then you could go around and make, like, this really pretty metallic, and I've never really seen this shimmery leather that's so, like, there's no split or anything on it. Right. There. Well, what really we do, perfect. for a bead shop, what we do is, 
we cut each of those lengths and examine them for knots and cuts. So when you get your leather, you can be assured that there is no knot nor cut in the leather. That's how high touch we are <laughs> on these. Yeah, because I was like, these are really perfect. So, yay yay so someone noticed kate they did i love that so here's the let me see if i can add my my camera is kind of um i'm gonna add this and you guys can see let me here's the palette that um that we sent to cynthia so now you can see it you can see we sent some four millimeter um fire polish we sent these um metal these gold uh silver shadows here these ponies here here's the leather it's the metallic purple along with the antique pink 0.5 millimeter which was good here's that eight millimeter so the english cut what i love about this is and what i love how cynthia's pieces kind of have that kind of that whimsical sometimes vintage look i feel like these are um, kind of a no-brainer to go with them. I've been having like this love affair with English cuts lately. I don't know. And then I sent you, Cynthia, some um, this these melons. I love them. The melon beads, they which I really love. Like, don't they look like those um, like mini versions of the uh, those? They make a or not now, but uh, vintage. And by vintage, I mean antique African trade beads that have yes. that kind of melon cup. You usually see them in like crystal. Yes, like yes, clear, that's right. Smoky quartz. Yeah. In that melon shape. Let me get, I'm going to solo highlight your table again. So you were talking about maybe drawing something out. Do you draw? What, what do you do? I love drawing my designs out. If I, if I know what I'm going, if I have a color, if I don't have a color palette and I'm saying I'm going to do a show, I can't bring all of my stuff. Like, you know, when we go to have our creative explosions at, in, um, in Montero, I can't bring in everything. So I'll bring like three boxes of beads or even less, like one right. box. And right. one of the things I'll, I like to do beforehand to inspire myself before picking is to make these, these are kind of like, um, I guess it's it's sort of a thumbnail watercolor of potential ideas yes. Out or of color ideas. So this is just, um, I don't usually work with this palette, but I thought, man, like, and, and then you can see how beads would, look at how that, that cord automatic, you know, like really, you know, goes with it. But um, this is one of the things that I'll do just to get started. If I don't have any ideas at all, and I'm kind of stumped, I'll get my watercolors out and make these blends and see if anything kind of strikes me. And here you can see I've put, this is salt, but I've drawn no, salt just to give it a little bit really, of texture and just to. That's great. So what kind of watercolors? So that's just a piece of watercolor paper, right, that mm -hmm. you've gotten. Because I am definitely, I am not a watercolorist. Janice is a very accomplished watercolorist as well. And I know that watercolor is really a medium that you gravitate towards. But that's just essentially a piece of watercolor paper, right? Right. Um, these are some, I just got these. Um, you guys have probably seen the ads from uh, Culture Hustle where they'll say, um, the pink is pink. And right, black, black, is black is black. I want the black is black. So real. This is, the, this is that palette from their watercolor line, and um, it's pretty good. I just did those from it, and this. Let me see if this is their blackest black right here. We'll see if it's actually as black as they they say it is. Now you're using. You gave me one of those brushes that you have there. That's one of those water brushes. The brushes that has the water in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's super good. This yeah. Is old. As the hills. Yeah, I have mine's they green. You can last so them. long, so long ago. You know what's good about it is you can pack a little mini thing of watercolors with you, and um, easily. And there's that pink is pink. You know, it's they actually came out with another pink is pink, and that's not as pink as. Oh. 
Well, this is kind of, now I've made that muddy. But that's okay. I don't really care. It's not as pink as I would have hoped, but the next pink I think will be even. Right. But what I'll do is um, say, like, I'll pick out colors that I, I don't usually pick out. Maybe... Maybe this orange. I don't usually use orange. So move the and move the palette over a little bit, Cynthia, so we can see you lay that lay that uh, watercolor down on the paper. Okay. Let me move this camera. Let me see. You just move your uh, uh, paper over to your left hand a little bit. Uh, I have this weird shadow happening. I'm gonna move that there. Okay. So if you're running into like a tight spot with your um, work and even any kind of like beading or whatever, you can just make these little squares. And um, sometimes you can use like, I'll just go ahead and let's see. Let's see if I can get that. Thank you. I love how you're just painting. I... Yeah, no, it's good. It's hard to yeah, work yeah. yourself with the camera. There you go. Yes, girl. You could actually you not go. even make a border. You can just go all to the edge. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me see. Is that better? There's a tiny bit of a lag, so I can't really see. Right. <laughs> what, what what doing. It looks good. That's a good that's a good uh that's a good area for it right there. So on mine, it's kind of uh, frozen a little bit on my big my big iPad, so it was kind of hard to see what I was doing. Yeah. Um, so sometimes if you don't know, you can just mix around things. And it does help to have some understanding of color. And I have talked about this with a lot of artists throughout the years. And color theory is still one of those things that's still... Even as a practicing artist, it's one of those things that is very easy to kind of uh, forget. Like there are rules, but as everyone knows, rules are there to be broken. Right. But having a little bit of an understanding will help you make better, better choices. So this palette, see how you can, I'm getting kind of, I don't usually work with these, but I, what I'm doing is making a kind of a mix just to see an experiment how this will look together and if it will like what's Marie Kondo says does it spark joy right and yeah. you can see I and have this little color wheel people people can see on the screen there when you were with us last when we were here together and you were creating some some jewelry or some some line designs in your watercolors I have these in the in the studio here the Facebook studio um, to refer to and stuff but this is that same you guys I whenever Cynthia lays color down on a piece of paper um, I feel like it's super inspiring right because you can see what she created there oh, thank you. Um, it's just like a little color wash right. are and you going to do really all you need to make um you know so if we were going to make a necklace together and say like with that palette of colors it's kind of a thistly so i wanted to make a wrap bracelet but i was kind of thinking of doing something that had this sort of eye shape here and that's the rest of the, that wrap We'll see how I can kind of get that in there. There's that blue, but there's, if I do an eye shape, I can think about it in terms of, hey, is this going to look like what kind of um, shape do I want to make? And if this doesn't work out, this, I'm not using like super sensitive watercolor paper. So it doesn't matter if I kind of make a mess with it, you know? Um, Maybe I'll do something that has a color instead of going a line of, you know, like a traditional, um, like here we'll have three purple beads and then like mm -hmm. three of those blue ones. Instead, maybe I'll do a color shift and that's where it, it's useful to me 
to kind of play out and sort of just play with um, color and combinations. Obviously, if you're working and um, you know you make a mess, that's just part of the experience of making. You know, it's it's not, you know, it's not. Um, yeah, it's not set in stone. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. It helps yeah. to have. No, it's just one of those things where you're just getting yourself in the mood to make. And um, I don't know, it's just fun to go it's super in. Sometimes I'll cut these pages up, you know, or right. use them as uh, backgrounds to, if you've seen my Instagram, you'll see that there's sometimes like watercolory backgrounds. This is right. from that. And this is just from me rooting around with watercolor and trying yeah. to find interesting, inspiring palettes. Yeah. So, it's just one of those things, you know, you just, it's just fun to experiment. And even if you're not, you know, even if you don't paint, it's one of those things that you can just pick up. Eat. Like this is, this set was like 50 bucks, but they have sets that are like $5. And, right. And you, know, you can get stuff like this for pretty cheap. And then, you know, it's just a good way, a good, another tool in your creative arsenal. Right. You know. And then I mean, something I mean, that really you never know what's gonna happen. Right. Well, and you could also, after these dry, you could use them as kind of your beading surface too, right? You could put this on your bead tray mm -hmm. or whatever. I do. I use them all the time. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I save them and I'll make notes, you know. But right. for me, a lot of times designing a necklace will be like this, where if I don't know what I'm doing and I don't know what palette, um, I will just pick colors. And so I have, like, say for that mandrake piece, it's a long piece. Mm -hmm. so what I would probably want to do is pick some and move over to a clean spot of the paper. Um, Is make some start with something that's like just really kind of draw a shape of a necklace that I kind of want, and you can see it's pretty loose. It's not really detailed. Now I wish I didn't do that. <laughs> right, I'll just tear it up. I'll tear it up. So here's my pendant. So really, what I'm doing here is basically making the shape of a necklace that I want. And so that's the that's that mandrake pendant. And so right. I can say to oh, what would be a good if you're this is a long okay, so this is looking like a long necklace. So maybe I want something that comes down like this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Maybe this is chain, or maybe this is yeah, so it's pretty easy to go in and just make these very simplified shapes. So, so it's you're not like one of those really, things that sometimes you can't see the necklace. Right. And you're not worried about what Maybe the material you is, something. what you're going to string it on. No, I'm just really just getting a shape of something. Yeah. Like colors. You'll see in a lot of the things I make, I love a color shift with mm -hmm. seed beads or gemstones. And sometimes it's hard to plot that. Especially if you don't know, you're like, oh, I don't really, you, you know, you want something, but you don't know what. Right. Um, if I were to do that, I could say, if I had this finished, like, I don't know, maybe I'll go in with maybe the green beads here, something green. Maybe they're like this shape. You see what I mean? How that can happen. Where right. You're just like adding different things. And then you can go over with pen and ink if you wanted to. But really, that gives me a good map of what to look for. So I would want to, I would say, hey, this is, these look like they'd be like small, maybe they're small, sugary, sparkly beads, kind of like, uh, maybe like that. That's kind of too dark, but maybe that's a good fit for some of these other shapes. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the ways that I'll make necklaces is through this. Because it is kind of hard to make a, a, a really well-balanced asymmetrical necklace from just, you know, I mean, obviously you can put it, you can lay things down on your bead board and, um, and move that way. 
but sometimes you don't get how things will weigh. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it's not going to. It's hard to visualize sometimes, and a and so I'll make a quick map of something I want, even if it's. Usually, I do this for more of my structured necklaces. Right. But um, it's one of those things that you just have to, you know, just do it, and then, you know, if it doesn't work out, you've tried it, and it's kind of a, a, a little exercise in keeping yourself creative so you don't get burned right. out, you know? And that, like you say, Cynthia, is a super loose um, pattern, right? So just yeah. even having that visual, um, and you can see that color shift, that ombre color shift. I think that's, I just think that's I genius. I love a color shift. Well, it's one of those things that, um, you know, you could do on a bead board, but it might take you a little longer to get there as far as mm -hmm. ideas. Like this, it mm -hmm. took me like two seconds to sit here and come up with this idea. And say if I wanted to switch gears and do something next to it that's saying like, oh, well, maybe I'll do a bracelet and maybe um, I want to use coral or something. I got this spiny coral. How am I going to use it? They're kind of weird shapes. And um, just sort of moving your colors around might inspire a good way to use a difficult to use bead that you might love, but design wise, it's kind of tricky because the pieces are like weird rondelles. Mm -hmm. So maybe right. like playing right. this way, I, I could come up with a, a better way to use it. And in, and in that palette, see, they're kind of an orangey, they're, they're orange and purple, I think. And um, they're really pretty, but they're really yeah. weird, you know, because they're kind of a rondelle. So yeah. If Rondelles are kind of hard to use sometimes. For myself, I can say, yeah, I don't know. It's one of those. It just maybe this that bead shape is is like a, it's a one of those design challenges for sure. Yeah. So, so there's I could just make the stack and then figure it out. So would you also use, so you're using watercolor as your medium here. You also use some other mediums. You, you use Procreate, right, on your iPad. No, I love do, Procreate. Do you also use any, like, colored pencils or whatever to get color on paper? Um, Kate, if my studio was not a nightmare, I would show you. I have... <laughs> I could open an art supply store with as much <laughs> art supplies. I love experimenting with art supplies with all of my heart. And um, I never get tired of them. So, yes, if it exists as some sort of form of paint, I have it and I like to use it. Except, Yeah. So if possible. someone if someone isn't as maybe um, adventurous, with watercolor, colored pencils would be a good way to st a good stand in. I have colored pencils. I love colored pencils. Yeah, colored pencils are fun, but they're not as loose. Right. You know. I know. I, mean? I like your loose. I use sometimes those. Um, what are those Copic markers? Oh yeah, that's good to go on top and make notes and things. Yeah. Yeah. You know? The reason this is is um, an effective tool is because of the nature of it being so loose in the first right. place. That's right. the thing is it can, like right now, I did not think that maybe I could use those beads as a column. You know what right. I mean? I didn't think of that until I saw it here. It sort of sparked that idea that I could string them this way and then have beads coming out on the side or something. On the sides, right. Gosh, that's, that's so cool. You know, that's so, uh, that could come out this way maybe. With turquoise, turquoise might look good with those. Right, and blue seems to look, work nice. So that's that's one idea of how to use other materials to keep your beads fresh or wow. your beading. I've been doing beading for a lot of years, and sometimes you know, you know, you don't want to do it after you've been doing it for a while, and you get tired of it. Um, one way to keep that going and to keep it. Like, I don't really, I have to be, you know, that's part of, like, what I do. So right. there's none of this, oh, I don't really feel like it. 
if you have like a design challenge or a magazine that you have to do a project for, you, you got to you got to get that done. Do yeah, that's really yeah, that's I, there's um sometimes like Kate Hacker will send this outline of colors. Like she'll say this was inspired by Frida Kahlo or whatever it is. Um, right. And she, they're looking for really really unique designs and sometimes you can't just go by the old standby of here's we're going to pretend it on a strand of of pearls or whatever you're going to have to get creative and make something right. that's really visually interesting that's more art jewelry than it is just you know, right you can just find it, the way that you know, uh, janice like, so likes to put it she likes to say that it uh is museum quality right that your those little details uh, really make the piece um, a museum worthy um, design for sure. Yeah, I love it when things kind of work out, you know, and you can make. Let's see if this, I have these white pens, and if you use a darker color, sometimes gel markers work great on top of watercolor. So I do mixed medias all the time. Um, Pens work really good for that. Let's see. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that if it's showing up. Yeah, it is showing. But um sometimes you can come up with something, you know, it's just if you're doodling around and coming up with uh shapes that you might not have thought of, maybe you can come up with that. And sometimes it's just the act of doodling and letting your mind rest. I'm a big fan of sort of letting your brain come up with its own solutions. So you have a process, Cynthia, yeah, while you're doing that. Pens. Those those are great. You have a process that you call night drawing. Oh, yes. And that is where you get everything out, all of the stuff you want to use. You have some good music on. It's a completely chill environment. And you just sort of kind of almost like free verse poetry, you just sort of let your brain and your hands go. And you're not really thinking about anything and you just, you know, make. And it's one of the best ways to sort of, I think, I find it relaxing. Of course, if you have too much expectation and you want things to look a certain way and you want it to be like, you want that cat to really look like Marty, then you know, that's, you know, you might have some disappointment and make it <laughs> unpleasant. But, um, you know, just kind of letting the, letting your materials. And that's one of the things is when you're working with really good, good quality materials, mm -hmm. your paints are nice, your beads are good. It's one of the most delightful. I don't know. I, I love making tactile, things. Tactile kind of really experience. Stuff. Yeah. Well, I like yeah, the, totally one of those things. I like the concept of your night drawing and you post them a lot on your Instagram. Um, and I find that idea I do. Um, I find that idea kind of suit like like you say, you have no um, expectation. you just create. You just make. That's the whole thing. Is it might not look good? Who's going to sit there and, and stand over you and say, you know, that could have been a little bit tighter. Right. If you have that, then you can just tell them to go on. <laughs> yeah. You go on now. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, you can be like, you know, listen, this is my jam right now. Yeah. And, um, you know, I don't have to hear that. Right. But um, this is one of the best ways to do asymmetrical. It's pretty easy if you're doing a symmetrical necklace to just line the beads up and go into a pattern. And a lot of people will like that. I mean, I like it. Depends what it depends on what it is, you know. Um, it's just interesting to just mix things up. I love that really is so loose with that water pen. I need to get my water pen back out. Oh yeah, I mean this this whole setup could be like under twenty bucks if you get an yeah. expensive set, and it's really useful. I do this all the time. And one of the other things is that you can use those backgrounds if you're taking pictures for your jewelry. Like mm -hmm. I'll show you, this looks really good. This is going to probably make it. 
Yeah, those are really those are really cool, Cynthia. Those like washes that you did there. Yeah, right. That looks on if you have like a necklace or something. Right. Yeah, my friend made me these earrings, and then actually probably be better on this more neutral one. But they also make good backgrounds for photos, and I use these pretty much continuously. I'll make big ones. They're all over. Sometimes I draw right. on top of them. Here's right. one that was sitting next to me. Like this one, I did that kind of real super. This is a neutral background. See right. That? All that. It's just kind of fun to do those kind of color shifts. But then I did a little bit more detail. Right. And that's with that pen. And then I painted this. Oh, look at them. Yeah, they came out cute. Yeah, do you but think, Cynthia? Yeah, <laughs> you think so? Cute. But yeah. that, you can see that I used multiple types of media. Yeah. You see how that's not just watercolor. That's, um, uh, it looks like I used some gouache in there in a pen. But that essentially yeah. was made in layers, you know? Yeah. Or how this, I drew over that. As soon as that was dry, see how you could go right. over it? The same thing is right. true of this. If it's dry, one of it's dry you can go over it with a marker and add your shapes so let me see if it, this is that looks and then dry. that watercolor brush pen those are still available right you can just go to your oh, art yeah, you can get those at michael's or yeah wherever wherever art supplies are sold they should have them um amazon i saw some or you could get them at cheap joe's that's a good place too that's a nice local art supply store. Um, so this one looks dry. Let's see. Then you can go in and add if you feel like it. Obviously, you don't have to do that. So that's my pendant. And so I think, you know, when I'm looking at this, I would think that that connection could be really interesting in here because I wanted it to be a long sort of shape. So I could go in and say, maybe I want some of those Englishy cut. What did you call them? English cut, rose cut? Yeah, the English cut. Yeah. And so that's that little lady. That's kind of a terrible drawing, but you can kind of see what I'm doing. Am I going to stack? Am I going to look for rondelles mm -hmm. or chain? But that's one of the fun things is even if this looks, say that's not working for me and it's kind of not then I could always do another one. Or you could lay your beads actually right on top and see if how that works. And I've right. done that many times just to see if I can get that. So like I would put these purpley ones on this side and the green ones on that. And then that's how I would work out my color shift. Right. You see how that works? That's great. And that way I can kind of plot and plan how I want my piece to turn. And it's just another way to design, you know, because I mean, there's all different ways to design. There's all these fancy boards now where you can do, it's almost like, a, like you just lay the beads out. Right. Um, this is just my method. And I don't know if it's, uh, if this has any kind of, I don't know. But, you know, that's, uh, that's design. It kind of can go wherever. Maybe even using cord with that. Yeah, that would look real nice. It could be tassels or something. And that's part of the fun is sort of inventing your piece and having a fun way to do it. And you know what? Um, this is also a good way. Um, I do this sometimes for people that will ask me for custom necklace. And so this is where mm -hmm. it's very useful is um, I made a necklace for this gal a couple months ago. She contacted me and she had like some kind of um, anniversary or something. And she wanted something really special. And I asked her colors that she wanted and I actually made a kind of a water. She didn't really know any stones or anything. She was just like, I love your style and I would love something. And so we did something similar to this where um, it took a few pages of layouts and different types of beads. But, um, and we didn't do it live. I just took pictures. But um, 
it was a really fun way that she could kind of get an idea of the essence of the necklace and how right. it kind of feel and not necessarily like a photo, but just of how the energy of that piece would look. Right. And kind so, of like a mood, was, a mood board for the piece. Yeah. Yeah, it was a and, mood, yeah, exactly. It was a mood board. Yeah. And if you, so like if you were working in your studio or if, you know, if I take this kind of idea when I do my layouts, you can take photos at different steps with your phone um, and kind of create that mood board. So like for your social media or even for your own sketchbooks or whatever. But I think that people, I know that I'm really enjoying kind of this peek behind how you would pull this together. And I think that as an artist, when you sell your work or even if, you know, you're just documenting it for yourself, you can have these, um, you can kind of have these little steps along the way so people can, you know, get a peek into your process. Mm, it's useful for, like, I keep, um, I keep these, and I have them in notebooks, and um, they are useful to revisit, because sometimes you don't use them, you know, mm -hmm. like you'll have it, and you'll be like, oh, that didn't really work, so I'll do something else, and you'll mm -hmm. have that for later, and you might revisit it, and it might spark some other idea. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's, you know, essentially, if you're making something, if you're trying to make things that are unique and not like other things you've seen, that can get kind of challenging. So especially yeah. when you see hundreds upon hundreds, like looking at social media and magazines and stuff, you're kind of, um, you have uh, a lot of information. Yeah, you're overwhelmed with choices. Yeah, yeah. And so sometimes it's nice to do a limited palette maybe do something kind of like isolate it so that you're not right. influenced. Cause I mean, I've heard people say, well, how do you prevent yourself from copying someone else after seeing, you know, so many different variations on a theme. It is actually pretty easy to see something and not even realize that you are copying it because you've seen it so many times, you know? Right. Exactly. Um, it is hard to make things and, and to really dig deep and come up with unusual pieces. But, um, I think that helps if you do if you do succeed because then people really gravitate towards your work and you know you'll sell it so you know ultimately that's what you you know i mean unless you're making it for a gift or whatever you're right making it to please another person so well i'm putting up some comments that people have had and i'm just going to run down these Cindy's saying that one of her key pieces or her key takeaways is time to take your time. It's not a race when you make these pieces and to shut your inner critic up. Right. Um, like you were saying, Cynthia, you don't need that noise in your brain. Right. Um, and then Lynn was saying, yeah, and don't compare what you're doing to what your neighbor is doing, right? It's like when your sixth grade teacher used to tell me, Katie, eyes on your own paper, right? <laughs> Same thing, you know, mm -hmm. eyes on your own stuff. Focus on what you're doing. And Mary Ellen exactly. is saying she's totally exactly. mesmerized by how you're putting these things together. Oops. Oh, well, that's good. Thank you. It's fun. It's a, um, if you have a chance, I would love to see what, if, if anyone else wants to try this, I would really like to see how other people kind of take away that information. Um, yeah. Well, we'd love yeah, to see I it. You a lot of good money for art school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you did. <laughs> so a lot of yeah, money in art school was being trained to ignore the inner voice of criticism and to really push to make yourself, like your work or whatever you're doing to yeah. come forward, you know, to really try to do, to do the most creative things you can, you know, and what really makes you happy. You know? Cause you'll find yeah. things that you will enjoy in bead making that, you know, I love making those crocheted necklaces. I can't get enough making those. And I'm yeah, happy that good. people buy them so that I can keep making them. Yeah. But it's one of those things. It's like, I don't enjoy doing seed beads, even though I right. love it. I have realized that to me, time, 
like trying to do um, counted stitches. That's right. Like, yeah. It can be a little. And, so um, and let me, you, ask, you know, maybe later. Yeah. Who knows? No, we got plenty of time. So let me ask you this question. There are some people who are saying in the comments, well, I'm not an artist, but I'd like to try this technique. Um, so what's your advice to get started to actually put a brush to paper? You're going to need a brush. You're going to need some paper. You're going to need some water. Yeah. No inner critic. So I have pens and paper. You, yeah, no, nobody that's like a negative uh, person standing around judging. You want to go somewhere quiet, <laughs> right? Um, let me see what I got here. I have like I have all these little palettes. Look how cute this one is. It's a super. Oh, look at one. that! Oh, I, I um, want that. Need, like, this is a handmade palette. I know it's made from like some lady in town that's Moon Mountain Pottery. Oh. No. That for me. And so um, there's a question here, a technical question. You can get, this is. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then oh, Emily ahead. sent me this. Oh. I love it. And this is another, oh, they kind of got melted. Um, this is a limited palette, and this is considered. Um, what's called an essential palette. Now, this is kind of melted a little bit, but that's okay because watercolor is um, like I can reuse this until the end of time. Right. All you need to do is add water. So it's not like I can just push that in there and then it's fine. And so, so this the is brush another version of a limited palette from these three colors. You can make every color. Anything. Right. So, so the brush the pen. pen. I have a bunch of these. They come in all different sizes. This right. opens up. And you just put water it has in. A tap. So I usually yeah. have a little thing that I. And there you go. And that's so it. Really, all you need is paper, some kind of watercolor paper, some kind of paint. These are samples from this gal that makes these. Um, like uh, holographic paints and um, people will sell nowadays people are making beautiful handmade paints and this is like just a sampler and so you can get little samples of paint too just to play with and um, they're really small but this will actually you know these little dots of color will last a surprising amount of time yeah you those know, are so cool you might you might get a little sticker shock and you're like, what? Yeah. Yeah, they're really beautiful. And look at look how cute this little watercolor. I mean, isn't that adorable? <laughs> look at that. I collect them. It's wow. Kind of like beads, you know? Yeah. When you have a lot of them, then it's then you just basically you have more choices. You don't wow. need more choices, but it's definitely fun to have them. Yeah. No, I think it's really so, cool. And I, and I like, and then, um, you know, Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Like this is a small, this is a small, um, watercolor thing that I'll take with me. So I was at a friend's house and kind of had a moment to myself and, um, I made this little drawing water. You're drawing, a little, I guess it's kind of, little, little, it, this started off as like a big blob. And then I went on top of it with more of this dark. So that's one way I like to work too. Are you making him into a bee? Background wash. And then do darks on top. Are you going to make that guy into a what bead? What was that, Kate? Are you going to make him into a bead? That little frog? I did make him into a bead. That's he, that. And he's so fat. He's gloriously fat. Yeah, I, I can't wait. That. I can't wait to see and that's him. One thing is that, um, yeah, I made that little drawing and then I ended up making the, um, that little fatty. So a lot of my work is kind of circular that way where, um, I'll start with a quick sketch and then sort of go from there, you know, and I like layering things, you know, like these pages, I'll just draw on top of this with 
pastels or whatever. I'm not, there isn't a goal here. And that should be the, uh, the other takeaway is that sometimes just mixing colors and, you know, you can go by, by the laws of like color theory and, um, you know, get a little color computer like they have those little, you know, it's like a wheel or right. you can make your own. Mm -hmm. And just sort of experiment that way. You know, it's kind of fun. It is fun. It's the same way with when you're using your beads and you spread them out just the way I did. It's the same sort of thing. You can work either way where you're more organized and you're, everything's kind of laid out perfectly in like a palette, like an artist palette, or right. more jumble. Right. There isn't really a wrong or right way. It's just whatever is comfortable. Whatever. I really like how that watercolor has dried now and it's given so much dimension to what you have. Oh, so watermarks. yeah, I think it's, I think it's really, really cool. Well, we have just a few minutes left, yeah, Cynthia. I like yeah, I like it a lot too. We have just a few minutes left. I know that we could go on and on about all of this, but I wanted to show the palette, I'm gonna, uh, let me move this over. This was Cynthia's original palette that she was sent. Um, and I know, Cynthia, you're gonna create something out of this that we'll be able to revisit in the future, right? This won't be our last rodeo with this palette here. Um, we'll come back on and maybe talk about what the end game happened and then i'm going to continue on with this wrap business that i've got going on here so i'll revisit this with you guys too at a later date um and i'm going to put this one back in the center um i would really love it if you guys took up cynthia's challenge um and um created you know, some backgrounds or played around with her watercolor techniques. Um, it looks like Cynthia's um, main front camera went out. So that's, that's probably... I'm not sure what happened there. Oh, there you go. But we can hear you now. We can hear you. So what I'm going to say is I'll sign off um, and I'm going to put a couple of... of uh things back up cynthia so people can find you of course they can find you here at beadshop.com we've got all of those new great things in but you also put some really cool things over in your etsy store you can find her over on cynthia thornton on etsy um both of the palettes this palette here that we uh sent over to cynthia you'll see that over at beadshop.com and my blue azalea um, palette that I used um, for this wrap that I'm going to be working with. Um, and then, uh, as Cynthia continues to draw over the top of that, I, I love it. I love that. You can find all of the um, projects and products from this broadcast right over on beadshop.com. You can sign up for our newsletter for the latest discounts, giveaways, and new products. And of course, you can find us on social um, at beadshop.com, the bead table um, on our Facebook group. And Cynthia, maybe you'll do some posts on the, the bead table, maybe just some of these watercolors that you've been doing. Um, okay. Maybe we can get a photo of, of what it is that we've done today. And of course, if you're watching us uh, live on our YouTube channel, we would love it if you would give it a like and subscribe. So, Cynthia, where can people find you on social? What's the best place? Green Girl Studios on Instagram or Green Girl Studios on Facebook. We're mostly on those two platforms. I yeah. have a Twitter, but I don't know that I've ever even. Yeah, Twitter, I don't. So. We don't really. We don't really Twitter so much. But look at how those gel pens are just coming right along. I love it. Well, yeah, Cynthia, no, it's, there's no right or wrong there. Look there's at no that. There's no right or wrong. It's all good. It's all fun. We're I all love here it. To have a good time. That's right. Well, I know there's so many comments here of people that are just saying thank you and a big thanks. And they loved just this um, 
inspiration and all of this great stuff. So I wanted to thank you, Cynthia, so much for joining me today. Um, and hopefully you'll come back and we'll revisit what you've created from these pieces that we've sent. Okay, that sounds like fun. Yeah, I'll get to work. I have a lot of ideas. I have plenty yeah. of ideas. Oh, it was great. Well, thank you so much. And we really appreciate everybody really hanging in there with this technical, um, <laughs> our technical uh, uh, issues today. But again, Green Girl Studios, G-R-E-E-N Studios on Insta. Cynthia posts a lot of her night drawings and stuff on there, which I just love. So you can you can find it there. And of course, uh, follow us for uh, at Bead Shop for all kinds of really great and inspirational content. So again, Cynthia, thank you so much. We will uh, circle back around. Thanks for having me. No, it was really, really great. It was really great. And people are excited to start about watercoloring. So we hope that you'll join us over on the bead table um, and post some of those things. So thanks again, Sin. I will talk to you soon. Um, I'm going to mute you out because there's a little bit of a feedback there. So I'm going to mute that there. I'm going to put me in the middle right here and say thank you again, everybody, for joining us. It was great to have you. And I really, really appreciate you hanging in there with these technical difficulties. I don't know what the the, the universe converged uh, to have the internets be kind of crazy today. So we really appreciate it. Um, it's always inspiring to see what Cynthia does and to have her inspire us with her art. Again, you can find all of her new things right over on our website at beanshop.com. And on Friday, Free Tip Friday uh, returns, you guys. It's time for Free Tip Friday. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit more on Free Tip about um, my process on doing this wrap bracelet, some more of the technical um, business with that, some technical uh, using the um, infinity stitch. We can never have enough infinity stitch there. And I'm gonna show you how I connect that two hold, um, that two hold spacer um, to this piece. So um, a lot of gratitude, a lot of thanks. Um, we really appreciate you supporting our small business and the small businesses of our friends because without you guys out out there we would not be here being able to do what we do best so thanks so much everybody and i'll see you on friday for free tip friday thanks so much everybody <laughs>